Hi, in this video, you will learn the definition of transmittance and adsorbent and their relationship in adsorption spectroscopy. So I'm going to use this physical model to explain the transmittance and absorbance. Basically, this is a typical setup for UV and visible spectrophotometer. There are many different ways to build the spectrophotometer, but this is one of the simpler design. It consists of source, monochromator, beam splitter, cells holder, this one for reference cells and this one for sample cell, and detectors. However, in this video, I'm not going to elaborate more on the components of UV and visible spectrophotometer, but we'll focus more on the process of absorption only. So let's begin with the definition of transmittance and absorbance. In this schematic diagram, it shows the attenuation of a parallel beam of monochromatic radiation as it passes through an absorbing solution of thickness B cm and concentration C molar. Because of the interactions between the photons and absorbing species, the radiant power of the beam decreases from P0 to P. The transmittance or T of the solution is the fraction of incident radiation transmitted by the solution as shown in this equation T equals to P over P0 Transmitter is often expressed as a percentage and called the percent transmittance Percent transmittance is equal to P over P0 times 100% Absorbance is defined as the attenuation of incident radiation as they pass through the sample. A graph of a sample's absorbance of electromagnetic radiation versus wavelength using UV and visible spectrophotometer is known as absorbance spectrum. The absorbance or A of a solution is related to the transmittance in a logarithmic manner as shown in this equation A equal to negative log T equal to negative log P over P0 equal to log P0 over P Ok now a sample in the sample cell will absorb the incident radiation while the transmitted radiation will be emitted to the detector as the radiation exits the cells and strikes the detector, an electrical current is created. The intensity of the radiation exists both the reference and sample cells is identical. Therefore, the current generated by each detector is identical. So in this case, the intensity detected by each detector are the same. So the ratio of P over P0 for intensity leaving the sample cell or P to that leaving the reference cell or P0 is 100%. So for zero concentration, the transmittance is 100%. Now let's add a little sample with X molar of concentration. For example, this is my sample, molecular structure of my sample uh, with a lower concentration. Notice that when I do this, the intensity of the radiation exiting the sample cells has decreased. And therefore, the current generated by detector has also decreased. Now the ratio of intensity P over P0 is no longer 100% and in this case, let's say that is down to 50% at the given concentration of X molar. If I add another equivalent of my sample to the sample cell, for example, the concentration is 2X molar greater than the before, 
that decreases the intensity even more and the transmittance is 25%. Similarly, an incremental increase in the concentration once more, my sample cell leads to another reduction by 50% and therefore the percentage of transmittance of 12.5%. Now you can see something very interesting here. The relationship between the percent transmittance and the concentration of the sample is not linear. Instead, it is exponential. However, it is very useful to have a linear relationship because this is much easier to predict how things will behave if we have a simple linear plug to compare. What August Beer, a scientist who discovered Beer's law, did was to convert that percent transmittance into a new unit called absorbance. Now you can see a linear relationship between absorbance and the concentration of the sample on my right. And he did so by taking a negative logarithm of the transmittance. Taking the log of an exponential function creates a linear function and so the data when plugged the absorbent rather than transmittance is considerably easier to look at. Now it is much easier to predict the exact absorbance by either extrapolating or interpolating within the data. And this is the reason why we convert percent transmittance into absorbance so often when conducting UV and visible spectroscopy. And you can see here, as absorbance of solution increase, the transmitter will be decreased. Let's try one calculation example to put this in the context. The question is, a sample has a percent transmittance of 44.1%. What is its absorbance? To answer this question, we can use this equation A is equal to negative log T. The transmittance value has been given from the equation, which is 44.1%. So by substituting transmitter value from the equation to this equation, you can get the absorbent 0.356. So the answer is absorbent for this question is 0.356. For activity, please try to answer this question. You can refer to the previous example to guide you to the answer. And the answer will be given after this. So this is the solution for our activity. By using the same equation as the previous example, A equal to negative log T, we just have to substitute the T for transmitter value from the equation into this equation. So A is equal to negative log 0 0.662. So the answer is absorbent is 0 0.179. So that's all for this video, thanks for watching.